It's been a slugfest between U.S. growth and U.S. value stocks, with each outperforming the other over the past year. And despite concerns about slowing economic growth, investors are still looking for companies that can grow bigger and faster. Today's audience-requested ETF matchup is a triple header between ETFs from BlackRock, Charles Schwab, and Vanguard. Who wins the battle? Find out right after this. This is ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and welcome to the show. It's great to see you again. Now, for new viewers, be sure to hit the subscribe button and join our community. And if you've been enjoying our originals like this one, along with Portfolio Makeover and the others, just hit the like button and let us know. Now, if you have an ETF battle suggestion that you think we should do, send me your ETF ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our X feed at ETF Guide. You can also check out our playlist which has all of our ETF battles. I've, again, got that link uh, posted below so that you don't duplicate any ETF battles that we've already done. So just make sure that your requests are, again, not redundant. Now, don't forget to visit, again, the description section below. We've got the investor resources, which includes links to our judges, along with our program sponsor, Direction. And while you're there, check out ETF Guide's margin of safety tool, which I designed and built to help you calculate and deploy your investment portfolio's safety net. Today's contest was suggested by a viewer named Boss Ball Head Dog. And I got worried there for a second because I initially read this as YouTube user name Ball Hog. And I'm sure glad I didn't uh, read that the wrong way. Uh, hopefully he's sharing the ball. Thank you, Boss Dog, for today's triple header. Between IWB from BlackRock, SCHG from Schwab, and Vong from Vanguard. Well, judging today's contest, we've got Dave Krinsis with ETF Portfolio Management and David Durking with TheStreet.com. Guys, it's great to see you again. Welcome back. Hey, guys. Good to see you again. Hey, Ron, David. Nice to see you guys. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and mystery. The mystery battle category is where you, our judges, can choose any factor or thing that you feel is crucial to today's contest. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's a better choice elsewhere, or they can opt for split decisions. I've got the scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the show, we will declare an overall winner. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So let's kick things off with David, David Durking. Cost is the first category. Please get us started. Yeah, these expense ratios are pretty straightforward. IWB is at 15 basis points. Schwab ETF is at 4. The Vanguard is at 8. It's not usual that you have a, a cost battle where Vanguard isn't the winner, but uh, it's the case in this one. Within these three funds, uh, Schwab is the clear winner at 4 basis points. I'll throw out a couple wild, card, uh, wild cards, though. If you're looking for the Russell 1000 index, I think Vanguard has a cheaper offering. Uh, V-O-N-E is at eight basis points. Uh, second wild card I'll throw out is just the Schwab Large Cap Growth ETF, and that's S-C-H-X. Um, it's not specifically focused on the Russell 1000, but if you look at the overlap, it's about 95% the same, so they're... Uh, essentially identical. That one's only at three basis points, so I'd, I'd recommend either of those if uh, somebody's looking just for the straight beta Russell 1000 alternative. But uh, within this battle here, SCHG is the winner. Thank you, David. And that is the earliest wild card nominations we've ever had in the history of ETF battles. So congratulations for a record-breaking moment. Thank you. I appreciate it. We move it. next to Dave Krinsis with uh, the same category, cost. Please give us your perspective. Well, first, let me thank my fellow Dave for throwing the wild cards early because it's just not a battle without wild cards. Um, in this battle, you know, it's a great battle because most investors need growth long term. And that often makes core equity their largest allocation. And these three large cap growth funds uh, have plenty of growth. So they're all, and they're all super cheap, ranging from four to 15 basis points. And while SCHG is the cheapest at four basis points. I call the cost category a split decision because cost differences are just rarely the deciding factor unless the underlying investments are identical. 
The next category is exposure strategy. So Dave Krinces, you're still up. Give us your angle. On exposure, IWB is the Russell 1000, which is a little more diversified than the other two. Vong and SCHG are both growth focused, so they have extra tech and more concentration. In general, with regards to their top tech positions, IWB is closer to the S&P 500, while Vong and SCHG are more similar to the NASDAQ 100, having roughly double the tech exposure of the S&P. And at ETFPM, we prefer the NASDAQ 100 for core growth whenever possible. And in its absence here, I call the exposure a split decision between Vong and SCHG for extra technology. Thank you very much, Dave. David Durkin, you're next on Exposure Strategy. Please give us your analysis. Yeah, I think we see it largely the same. Uh, Russell 1000, uh, great option if you just want sort of large cap beta exposure. Um, between the two growth funds, uh, because they're just so broadly focused, you really kind of have to dig into the details of the indexes that these funds track just to find uh, really anything that would uh, differentiate one from the other. And as far as their criteria for selecting growth stocks, they're substantially the same. I mean, they're both looking for uh, you know higher valuation metrics. So they're looking for higher uh, price to book, higher price to earnings ratio, uh, higher sales growth, earnings revenue growth. So the two funds sort of uh, slice and dice it in slightly different ways, but the way they approach it is substantially the same. Um, if you break it down to the sector level, they're both within usually uh, 2% one way or the other of each other. They both have uh, 40, 45% tech exposure. Uh, the correlation is virtually identical across both of them. So uh, I agree with my fellow Dave. I call it a split decision between SCHG and Vong because they're substantially the same, uh, same exposures. Well, that takes us next to performance and... David Durkin, you're up, so please give us your take. Yeah, and I'll just kind of piggyback off of what I just said. Because these two funds are identical, their uh, historical performance records are virtually identical, too. Um, if, if you look at uh, VONG and SCHG uh, since Van, the Vanguard Fund debuted back in 2010, uh, the, the charts are pretty much two overlapping lines. I, th I think there's you know 1% difference over the course of 13 years, so it's... Uh, it's kind of a non-factor there. IWB, uh, much lower return, but uh, of course we know why that's the case. Tech and growth have been the dominant factors over the past decade or more. So uh, again, split decision for me on the two growth ETFs on performance. Next up is Dave Krinsis with performance. Dave, which of these three ETFs stands out? Ron, you know, over time, investors find that assets like stocks and technology that often bounce the most in bull markets, they also typically drop the most in a crash. So it's important to see the returns this year combined with the declines in 2022 for a complete short-term perspective. As of September 15th, 23, the returns for these funds over the past 1.7 years are still down four to 8%. Bonds did worse, so diversified portfolios are still down and the balanced income and growth benchmark was still down 19%. Now for stocks over the trailing five years, the NASDAQ 100 stands out. Then again, over the trailing decade, the NASDAQ 100 strongly outperformed with a gain of 420%, which was almost double the S&P. Still, the big story in growth equity has been leveraged ETFs. You knew it was coming. Sure, they can be dangerous, but the following data is incredible. The three times NASDAQ 100 TQQQ is still down 52% over the past 1.7 years, and it disappointed investors somewhat over the past five years. However, this past decade, it delivered a phenomenal 21 times your money. This shows how great investment returns often require great investor patience. Also, there are additional uses for leveraged ETFs. They can enable folks to earn more interest on larger cash balances or amplify tax-free investments through leverage in a Roth IRA. Just remember, leverage can be extremely dangerous. Only use leverage when you're making money. And overall, I give this growth equity performance win to the revolutionary three times NASDAQ 100 TQQQ 
and the unleveraged version QQQM. And in their absence, I call it a split decision between SCHG and VOM. Well, that takes us next to the mystery battle category. This is where our judges could pick a single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So, Dave Krinsis, give it to us. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So, Ron, one of these days I will surprise you with a new mystery category, but not today, my friend. Position size is always very important. And at ETF PM, we could allocate up to 100% of our tactical portfolios in all three of these diversified growth ETFs, but we strongly favor the NASDAQ 100. So for position size, I give the win to the unlevered NASDAQ 100 wildcard QQQM, and in its absence here, I call it a split decision. David Durkin, you're up next. Please give us your mystery battle category. What is it and which of these ETFs wins it? Yeah, my mystery category is going to be sort of broadly looking at the long-term outlook uh, for these sectors. I think you, you don't necessarily want to judge the quality of an ETF based on you know what market it's in or how you think it's going to perform in the future. But in this case, I, I don't think you can completely ignore it because ever since the financial crisis, it's been uh, large cap tech and growth that's dominated. It's been U.S. Uh, over international that's dominated. And that's like a 15-year run of near uninterrupted outperformance. Now, uh, could that continue over the next decade? Sure, I suppose. Uh, you know, could AI reset the market completely and we have another, you know, tech bubble on our hands? You know, it could happen, but I, I wouldn't bet on it. So um, if you're looking for another wild card, Ron, I know you love these. I'm going to pull one kind of out of left field here, and I'm going to throw VT, the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, at you. Because I think, I really think that the next decade is going to be sort of a reversal of this decades long trend where we finally see international kind of have a moment here and we uh, see value sort of have a, another moment here. And if you're looking at that, then. I think investors are really going to want to consider having a more balanced portfolio globally. Now, I bring up VT because uh, that's still about 60-40 U.S. international, so you're not abandoning your, you know, your U.S. large cap exposure altogether. But uh, you're getting a nice balance, mostly developed markets. You got a little emerging markets in there uh, as well. But uh, the reason I like that is because it's. Uh, you know, strictly valuation more than anything, because these two growth ETFs we've been talking about, they're trading at about 35 times earnings right now. And, you know, that's historically expensive. And, you know, if you're going to invest for the next decade, if you're, uh, you know, if your starting point is something this expensive, odds are your forward looking returns are probably going to be pretty disappointing. So, uh, VT trades at about 22 times earnings, so it's much more balanced out as far as uh, sectors and exposures. It's obviously more balanced out than a growth-tilted fund. So um, within this battle, I would stick with IWB as my winner over the growth ETFs based on valuation and exposure. But um, if you're looking to diversify globally, I think VT is a great option for doing that as well. How will today's ETF showdown go down? I have no idea. So let's give our judges one final chance to weigh in with their overall pick. And thus far, we've had a bevy of wildcard nominations. But I'm wondering if they're high conviction picks. We're about to find out. David Durkin, please give us your overall battle winner. Uh, you know, VT isn't necessarily a high conviction pick for me. I think it's a, I think it's a good pick. Uh, within the constraints of this battle, obviously, it's uh, whether you want sort of long-term beta exposure or you want growth exposure. I personally would kind of tilt away from the growth exposure at this point. Uh, between SCHG and VONG, I think it's a split decision. I think you're pretty much uh, getting substantially the same thing with both of them. If you want a tiebreaker, I'd go with uh, SCHG based on the lower expense ratio, but uh, that's splitting hairs a little bit. But uh, overall, I Within these three ETFs, I'd say IWB is my winner because I think it's just a little better positioned, a little more broadly diversified. I kind of like that. But again, if you're looking for a lower cost Russell 1000 alternative, I would probably go with SCHX as my winner. That's the Schwab large cap ETF at three basis points. So I'm actually going to go with that one as my winner in this battle. Dave Krinsis, your final chance to weigh in with your overall battle winner. Give it to us. 
Ron, to recap this core growth equity brawl, it all comes down to tech exposure. If artificial intelligence continues to learn as fast as Mogadot is predicting, which is insanely fast, we may all be massively underinvested in tech. And while ETFPM is extremely bullish on artificial intelligence long term, we do still prepare for the unexpected and protect client principle with active risk controls when needed. Regardless, even the best growth assets and investment strategies are extremely bumpy at times and disappointing on occasion. This means that great long-term investments often require great long-term patience. Investors gradually see it's the long-term annualized return and risk level that matter most. The three times NASDAQ 100 was super dangerous without protection. TQQQ fell by 79% last year, and it lost 73% in just one month of the 2020 Corona crash. However, the trailing 10-year gain of 21 times was phenomenal and almost 10 times the S&P return. In fact, other top leveraged tech products like the three times FANG, symbol FNGU, and semiconductor three times Soxel, SOXL, they've done even better. This data shows over the past decade, three times technology, TECL, TECL, delivered 28 times your money, which was more than two and a half times the return of Apple. So all of these hyper growth products have been sensational at times, although their extra risk requires small initial positions, extreme patience, active risk controls, or all of the above. So I give this growth equity battle win to the sensational NASDAQ 100 index either through the three times wildcard TQQQ or the unlevered QQQM. And, you know, I think I understand uh, my fellow Dave's view of being concerned about the high multiple of tech at these levels, but I suspect the evolution of AI will continue to expand that multiple. Well, any final thoughts for our judges before I read off our scorecard? I think you've said it all. But I'm giving you one final chance. I guess AI is kind of the big wild card here. You know, it, you know, the Internet was the big revolutionary technology, you know, 25 years ago, and AI could be it today. So it, it very well could send the market skyrocketing. I just I'm a little more of a fundamental investor, I guess. So I get a little nervous at these levels. Well, our judges have spoken. And according to my battle scorecard, this is going to be a three way split decision between SCHX, that's a Schwab ETF, and TQQQ and QQQM, which were the latter ETFs were nominated by uh, Dave Krinsis, and uh, of course, SCHX nominated by David Durkin. And what do you know? A triple header uh, that went down with a, a triple split decision between three wildcard ETFs and I think each, each of our judges raised some great points. Of course, David Durkin saying, listen, there might be a reversion to the mean, even though those foreign stocks have underperformed on a relative basis to U.S. stocks. That could be where the action is in the future, um, a, a point well, uh, taken. And then, of course, uh, Dave Krentz is making his argument. Listen, we're just getting started with this whole revolution with AI. And um, why uh, try to reinvent the wheel? when uh, ETFs uh, like the triple Qs have caught that growth upswing. And so he uh, was clearly in favor of the, the triple Qs as uh, his, his choice. Great job to both of our judges for breaking it down. Incredible numbers that you threw out on today's program. And I think at the very least, today's show will help all of our uh, program viewers to have a better insight and also to make up more informed investment decisions Thanks again to both of you. Well done. Thanks, Ron. Good to see you again. Thank you, guys. Stay positive, people. Don't forget to visit the description section below. We've got research links to our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction. Well, keep your ETF battle requests coming. Send me your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our X feed at ETF Guide. Make it good. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time.